A systemic classroom-wide and, if possible, a systemic school-wide SEL approach that allows embedding SEL practices throughout learning context and across all levels of the education system would maximize the benefits of SEL. Here, in this part, we focus on building a school community in collaboration around SEL implementations, taking the perspective of a systemic approach. Here, peer collaboration among teachers, the support of school level management and school family collaboration and communication are highlighted. The systemic SEL framework proposes four coordinated sets of practices to establish evidence-based SEL practices. Number one, build foundational support and plan by establishing SEL teams, engaging stakeholders broadly, fostering awareness and developing a shared vision. Thinking of school-level practices, a group of teachers with the leadership of the school administrator could start their SEL plan. Number two, strengthen adult SEL competencies and capacity by cultivating a community of adults who engage in their SEL, build trusting relationships, and collaborate to promote and consistently model SEL throughout the school. Teachers and school administrators must raise awareness towards their own competencies, exhibiting prosocial behavior through communication and interaction with their students, peers, other school staff, and parents. Three, promote SEL for students. By developing a coordinated approach across the school, classrooms, homes, and communities. As a teacher, your efforts in the classroom for developing the social and emotional skills of your students will be supported and reinforced when students find the opportunities to use those skills outside of the classroom. For example, in the hall, in the canteen, in the garden, at home with their parents, and so on. Four, practice continuous improvement by establishing an ongoing process to collect and use implementation and outcome data to inform decisions and drive improvements. Using questionnaires, surveys, reflective paragraphs, and so on will be very helpful to evaluate what has been done and obtained and what can be done to improve. The figure provides a bigger picture of SEL and how different contexts such as school and home are interrelated in the lives of children in developing those skills. Here in this part, as noted earlier, we focus on classrooms and schools. Thus, we focus on communication and collaboration among teachers, school management and parents and caregivers. Let's take a close look at the SEL requirements in the classroom. Teachers being fully committed to SEL to communicate and model the behaviors is highly important because students model those behaviors. Here, for example, how you communicate, resolve conflicts and manage stress will be modeled by your students. This might not be as easy at times thinking about workload, life problems, facing repetitive disruptive behaviors in class maybe, curriculum requirements, etc. In such cases, stepping aside, regulating your emotions, then reacting to the problem at hand with a mindful approach would be more helpful. Another important thing, teachers should have a deep knowledge of their students such as their strengths and needs. Observing your students carefully, but in a natural way, and using your social radar, empathy, enables you to understand your own emotions and at the same time, understand and react to the emotions of others. You could also use some scales, questionnaires, and visuals. It's also very important that students have a saying in the learning processes and that their perspectives and their voice are considered. Classroom meetings, scales, questionnaires, voting and idea boxes would be very helpful to learn more about your students' perspectives. You can explain and show your students that you care about them and that their ideas by listening to their perspectives. 
This doesn't mean you need to apply every idea that you hear, of course, but you create a more inclusive and engaging learning environment.